Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another video. And uh, this is something that's going to be really fun to do is, is taking a look back and having some nostalgia for my favorite series of products in the PC world, the ThinkPad. Now, um, this video and uh, probably the next couple of videos uh, are all going to be wrapped around a number of ThinkPad models that are part of, I guess what you'd call the Lenovo line of ThinkPads. So this would be you know, after 2005, 2006, when IBM sold the PC company to this Chinese startup, Legend Computers, and created this new company called Lenovo, um, they took the ThinkPad brand and the ThinkCenter brand and NetVista and everything else that was part of PC. Um, and for the first, I guess, year or so, uh, they just kept all the, the model stuff all the same. And then when it was time, they you know, kind of relaunched their new uh, product lines with a new branding. Um, and generally, it's considered that the launch of the Core i a line from Intel was really that changeover to the new Lenovo engineered and designed technology. So here we're looking at a ThinkPad T510. And if I remember correctly, this is a Gen 1 Intel Core i. So you had i5 or i7 processors. Um, from a 520M up to an i7-620M, uh, all dual-core uh, based systems. Uh, Graphics-wise, you either had the integrated Intel graphics or a couple of models that would have a discrete uh, NVIDIA uh, NVS3100 graphics card uh, with like half a gig of, of memory. Uh, it is a 15.6 inch screen, so a, a nice big screen display on this baby. And then there would be three different panels that would be available. So there was like a low-end uh, 768, a 900, and then a 1080p uh, models, depending on what you, what you wanted. You had a um, integrated camera, and you still had the Think Light available on this, on this as well. So this is before the LED keyboards became more popular for the business models, and they were still doing the Think Light. Um, you know, it, it comes here, there, what certain people remember and like better um, the nostalgia of the think light versus having the illuminated keyboards what was more important to you having that illumination around the whole computer that was built in or just being able to see all the keys um, it's up to personal preference uh, uh, I, I, I switch back and forth in fact I think probably my favorite is going something like a modded t430 which gives you the think light and you can put an illuminated keyboard in if I remember correctly but I could be wrong you can tell me in the comments below uh, Memory-wise, this thing was uh, DDR3 SODIMS, and to spec, it should only take 8 gig, so we should only be able to handle, um, it should only be able to handle a pair of 4 gig DIMMs, but you might be able to get this higher, especially if you look at doing some of the BIOS um, uh, changes you can make. So you can, you can burn a BIOS onto this that isn't the original uh, Lenovo BIOS, which can give you more uh, functionality in there as well. And then storage-wise, it was one SATA storage device. And normally you would get a SATA drive in here, a 250 to 500 gig. Uh, but there were actually some SSD options available at the time of this model coming out. Of course, they would have been ridiculously expensive um, uh, to go in there as well. And mainly that was because there was a couple slimline models that were out at the same time as this that were using 1.8 inch SSDs. And they had a uh, an adapter caddy that would fit it into a standard 2.5 inch tray and you could get that option available in this we're actually going to look at that in a couple of weeks um, a model that has one of those drives uh, let's take a look at uh, you can see the original seven row keyboard is still in place here it does have the ultra nav uh, connection on here so you've got your track point with three button as well as a touchpad with buttons and a fingerprint reader on this side integrated speakers so one of the things you'll notice if you are used to more modern uh, ThinkPads is when you get a larger ThinkPad now, you'll have the wider keyboard that actually may have a numeric keypad, key, keypad built into it as well. In the case of this model here, when we had these larger models, they used the standard keyboard across all ThinkPads, and then that extra space was used for something else, like extra buttons, or in this case, uh, making more room for the speakers. Front end of the system, there's nothing really going on going on along here um, on the bottom. Your hard drive is here, access to one memory DIMM, and then some additional screws here to remove the keyboard, which is where the other memory DIMM. So there's one on each side of the system board. Mechanical docking still available. And then you had your batteries 
So you'd have a, a couple of options for batteries, a standard slim batter that would fit in here, and then one of these thicker ones. And then I believe on some of these models, there was actually like a bigger slice battery that would not allow for mechanical docking, but would allow for additional storage capacity. And then we've got our Ultra Bay Enhanced drive area here, uh, where we've got a Multi 3 DVD burner. And then we'll take a look at connections. So uh, probably one of the last series models, I think the 510 series ThinkPads were the last ones to actually have a modem integrated. After that, they kind of did away with it and said, no one needs modems anymore. It's all about, it's all about Wi-Fi and, and Ethernet. Um, a powered USB 2.0 port, our uh, barrel adapter for power. They hadn't switched to the flat adapter for a couple more generations. Uh, exhaust, you'll notice here that there's no open panels here for the exhaust at the back. The grills aren't, aren't actually there. Um, they're only on this side here. I believe that's possibly, we'll, we'll boot this up, but I think it's because this model doesn't have the discrete graphics adapter and it wasn't needed for the extra cooling as a result. I could be wrong about that though. Uh, display port out, VGA out, some additional USB ports. Then we have an, um, I think that's an another USB port or a powered USB or something like that. Um, Firewire, mechanical on off switch for your uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, smart card reader in, up here for uh, like security purposes. And then on this side, as I mentioned, we have our multi burner. We have our ethernet port, Kensington lock. And then we've got a uh, uh, SD card port and then an express port, express, express card port. So that's the, the, the replacement for PCMCIA. All right, so if we open this thing up, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug in I'm gonna plug in the barrel adapter because the um, the battery on these ones is okay, but when you get with these older ThinkPads, um, sometimes the battery reads aren't the best in terms of how well they show how much battery is remaining, and I don't want this thing dying right when we go. So we will power on. For some reason, the multi burner decided it wanted to pop out at that exact moment, and we will just slide up here sorry about that i'm going to move the light away a little bit and we'll get booted up now you will notice i'm not running the original os um, so part of my you know work on these machines when i get them refurbished um, this is going to be getting donated to charity so um, my point on these ones is to get a, mod a modern os um, it would have been windows 7 but windows 7 is no longer supported so we have to go with something different so we go with windows 10 um, and a Windows 10 OS uh, running on this to be able to go and uh, and keep working. All right, so let's take a look and see what we can see as far as performance stuff goes on this. If I remember correctly. So this model has the i5 M520. This was the lowest end processor that was available on this model on the five on the the t510 so it's a dual core 2.4 gigahertz and i'm pretty sure when we look at the graphics here there is no there is no discrete graphics card coming up if we look at device manager and i go to the graphics portion I'm pretty sure we're not going to see anything in the way of in NVIDIA. And I don't remember seeing any NVIDIA drivers coming up. Um, it was just the Intel HD graphics that came up. Yeah, so it's just the Intel HD graphics. So that would explain why we didn't have that extra event open at the back. If it was, I believe the way it worked was if it, it's either if it had the i7 in it that it would need it. Um, or if it had the discrete graphics, it would need it. And I'm not sure going back, thinking back to what the configurations were for on these, I don't honestly remember if there was even the chance to be able to mix and match and choose. It could all just have been on the board. And if you pick the 620 model, it was the one that came with the discrete graphics. And that was what you were going to get is what you were going to get. I'm going to pop on my think light here so I can, so I can see my keyboard a little bit better. You can see it up at the top there. Uh, memory wise, uh, I have four gig of DDR3 installed in here. So again, both of the DIMM slots are taken up. This is fine for running a standard Windows environment. As you can see here, uh, what's uh, what's used and what's available. It could be upgraded up to eight gig if needed. 
Uh, and then as far as storage goes, this has just got a, a standard, I think, 300 gig hard drive in it. I don't believe this is the original 320 gig hard drive that would have come with this uh, drive. I've, you know, made changes and upgrades and, and a lot of the times when I get laptops in, especially, they don't have the original hard drives in them. So I've got to go from my stockpile of used drives that are still in working condition to be able to get that up and running and working. But this system works fine. Uh, we've got it all up to date with uh, with Windows 10, ready to go for a, a prospective user and a fun little device. So a great little trip down memory lane, taking a look at one of these uh, big chonker 15.6 uh, inch laptops that uh, is gonna suit somebody well. Oh, one other thing we wanted to look at is I wanted to confirm what the display settings were to see which screen this was. I'm gonna expect that this is the 768. Yeah, and it is. So this is the lowest end resolution screen of the three that were available, 1366 by 768. So nothing too ter nothing too exciting as far as graphics performance goes. It's going to be a low nit count, so it's not as bright a screen. However, that being said, uh, for a laptop to use for standard computing purposes in today's environment, this has got all the power that you need, and it's built in one of the most durable cases that you can imagine with a ThinkPad uh, engineering. So I think it's going to be a good, uh, uh, have a good second life from uh, where it's finished its life as a business machine. Hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane. If you had a T510, I would love to hear your stories of where and when it was used. If you're still using one today, um, I, I love to hear about all the things that you can do for modding and upgrading. So what are the you know best choices for BIOS upgrades on these things? And is there hacks that you can do to get different processors running on it that weren't originally supported, etc.? Please let me know in the comments down below. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy in these strange times, and we will catch you in the next one.